How's it going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Gorgon City style deep house bass using X for Records Serum. So yeah, without further ado, this is the sound what we're going to be making. I've made a little drum groove just so you can get to grips of what it would sound like in a beat. This is it. There you have it, a nice deep house bass, nice and rich. I've got a few controls I've set to some macros here. I've got a delay that you can bring in and out, and uh, a macro set to a couple of things this one's set to. Macro 2 is set to the filter cuff, cut off, and the resonance, just to sort of give it a little bit more of a plucky feel. So yeah, um, I'll show you the sound on its own quick. Real straightforward, real easy to make. The ba main part of the sound is, is just a sub oscillator, which is one of these uh, sort of rounded square, sine score square, and uh, a square wave. So yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and initialize this preset. So the oscillator, what we're going to choose is from the basic shapes. Move the wave table until you come to a square wave. Just to boss it up a little bit, I'm going to change this to quantize just to take the edge off it. This, it's almost like a like a rectify or a bit crush sort of sound. If you use it in small quantities, it just helps take the rounded edge off the square. Here it's started to give it that sort of raspy sort of sound. Um, I use a sub oscillator as I said. I clicked it, turned it on, changed it to this sort of uh, squared sine wave. It's sort of a mixture between a square and a sine wave. And then pull the level down to about 50%. I use a filter to control this. It's the main part of sculpting the sound is this filter. Um, you've got to make sure that oscillator A and the sub are both routed to this filter. So both these boxes are checked. We'll turn the filter on, change it to a Moog low 18, quite a steep slope on it. We're going to drive the filter around to about 35%, push the fat knob round to about the same, a little bit higher, 42, resonance to about 15%. I use the uh, note key tracking on the resonance a bit later on, but for now we're going to put an envelope on this cut off. This is the main tool for sculpting this sound. So we're going to use envelope two. So drag it, put it on the cut off, and we're going to pull it negative to about minus forty eight. The attack off to around 171, keep decay where it is, sustain on maximum, and pull the release back slightly. Starting to get that sort of uh, deep house feel now. Uh, we'll set the main master envelope up, we'll back the attack off ever slightly to about 60 milliseconds. Pull the sustain back to about minus 15, minus 16 dB. Okay, 
Okay, we're getting there now. As I say, quite a few bits more modulation to do before we go to the effects section. Uh, one thing I did do is uh, the track what I was trying to copy, it's not an exact copy, but it is uh, Gorgon City Go All Night featuring Jennifer Hudson. It's the newest one out in the charts. I noticed that the notes sounded like they had a little bit of a rise to them. So to get that, I used Envelope 2. I dragged it and dropped it on this fine these is like these are for the pitch this is this one goes in octaves this one goes in semitone this one goes in center tones which is hundredths of a semitone if you drag and drop envelope 2 onto this and then we want to push it push the modulation so it is positive at around 70 <laughs> Now what the envelope doing over the, it is over this tack time, it's increasing the pitch of this oscillator by just under a semitone. It gives it that slight sw sort of sweeping up sound rather than it just being a flat dead tone. Around 70 or 80 seems to sit nice. It's a neat little trick just to help give it a little bit of an upward movement. Yeah, for the main oscillator, sorry, uh, you don't touch the phase, random, pan or level. I kept it how it was, all how it was as standard. Uh, one unison voice. Obviously it's a bass patch. Okay, that's all we use envelope 2 for. Um, I use a couple of macros to do some bits and bobs later on. Um, the only thing I will do now is I use the note articulator, whatever you want to call it, note expression or key tracking, most people call it. I use this on the resonance, so drag it, drop it on the resonance, and get it positive to about plus 42. What this means is the higher up the keyboard that the notes are played, the higher the resonance amount is going to get. It helps gives it a bit more snap as the higher notes are played. We're going to create our own curve. We're going to push this right up. Just helps it give it a little bit more bite. Nice little neat trick. Key tracking on a resonance. Um, that's the only thing I use the note expression for or key tracking. So we'll go ahead and set the effects up now. These play a big part as well. I use a distortion. Use the diode too. Twenty nine percent on the mix. Twenty two percent on the drive. I used a pre filter and I set it to high pass. So we're only affecting the high uh, ends of the sound. I had it all the way up to 1300 hertz and I had the Q set around 1.4 you don't want to be distorting anything lower than that really anything lower than 1000 hertz I try not to distort unless it's de dedicated distortion on a sub bass but for a patch like this um, I cut everything below 1300 hertz and it sounded quite nice I really like these two diode distortions in this there probably the best two in it the other one is a delay we're going to be able to control this with a macro whether you want to hear the delay or not but for now we'll turn it on turn the feedback to zero because this is going to be modulated by the macro I had the left on 1 over 4 the right on 1 over 8 tiny little bit of uh, EQing just pull the uh, low frequency up to about 2000 hertz and add the Q at about three, three or four. Uh, set it to a ping pong delay. Set the mix on zero so you're not going to hear anything at all. I use macro one for this. So yeah, if we drag macro one. drag it, drop it onto the feedback we want this to around 30-40% drag it on the mix as well 
a little bit higher on this, about 50%. What this now means is that this macro knob is going to control the amount of delay that you hear and the amount of feedback that is running through the delay. Um, on almost zero you're going to hear nothing, on maximum it's going to go to these points here, so mix on 40, feedback on 30. I'll just show you what this does. Neat for modulating this towards the end of 16 bar patterns or something, just to... I noticed that they did that in the track, how they added delay come in at a certain point, that's why I did it on this macro. Probably give the filter a little bit more so we're only affecting the high parts. So yeah, we'll rename this macro delay. Um, the other ma uh, <coughs> modulation that I had in the matrix was I used macro 2 for the filter cutoff. So macro two, drag and drop this for the filter cutoff. Pop it on there, pull it minus just a tiny amount, about minus ten. I called this one sort of sub stroke pluck. It's taking the sort of lower elements of the sound out. It sounds weird by pulling the cutoff down, but it did, and it makes it more of a plucky feel. So as you drive it round, what I did do this on as well is I dragged this and put it onto the resonance. Same again, just push it up ever so slightly. So as the pluck increases, you get more resonance just to help give it a bit more of an acidy bite. Great to be used in tandem with the delay. I think that's pretty much the sound done then. As I say, the basis of the sound is just a sort just a square wave with a filter on it and some some really clever modulation, nothing too stressful. I think mono mode. And don't check mono mode, I didn't. Sometimes I do check mono mode when, when you're making basses. If you're only using one voice, it doesn't matter anyway. It's generally going to be mono. So yeah, for the effects, that's all it was. Distortion and delay. Delay only audible by this macro that we've assigned. And a couple of modulations on the filter envelope and the resonance to create this sort of pluck. Okay, right, I'll show you with that beat again. There you have it, a Gorgon City style deep house bass using extra record serum. Such a versatile synth for this, you can pretty much make anything with it given time. Um, I use it mainly for my trance and my drum and bass, but deep house, as you can say, piece of cake. That's just one square wave oscillator. The the, the amount of modulation possib possibilities that you got with this since enable you to turn a simple waveform like a square wave into something like that. But yeah, for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please subscribe. Many more serum tutorials to come. Check me out on uh, Facebook and Google+. Plus. It's Sound Design Tutorials. Best thing to do if you've got any questions about Serum or any of the other synths that I use, including the virus, is to tweet me at Sound Design Tuts. Okay, thanks again for watching. Cheers.